In this video, I'm going to show you how to check spelling in multiple languages, any of them. Notice that I'm inside this markdown file and I have two different languages. I have English here above. I don't have any spelling warnings. If I scroll down here to Spanish, you're going to see the under curl, meaning that it detects that there are spelling errors. I can configure Lua line to show me the spelling language that I have set for a document or a file. I'm going to press a key map right now. Leader, M as in markdown then S as in spell, then L as in language. And notice that I have three different options here. These are three key maps that I configured. I'm going to show them to you in a little while. And if I set this document to both Spanish and English by pressing the letter B, you'll notice that Lua line changed here to both languages and I don't have any spelling errors in the document. If on the other hand, I set it to Spanish, let's see what happens. Leader, M, S as in spell, L, then S as in Spanish. You're going to notice that Spanish doesn't have any spelling mistakes because it detects that, but all of the words in English do show up spelling mistakes. So when I'm taking notes in two different languages, I always set it to both. Let me switch this document to both, leader, M, S, L, B. If you want to know how I can figure spelling, I have a video for that. Just go to my YouTube channel and you're going to find this video. The second one, my complete Neovem Markdown setup and workflow in 2024. It's a long video, 48 minutes. I have a spelling section at the beginning of the video, so you'll be able to see how I can figure it spell there. In this other video, I'm just going to show you how to set it up to take notes in two different languages. First of all, let's look at the key maps. I'm going to jump to my dot files latest directory. I'm going to look for a spell here. Spell here is the first key map. This is the one that sets the language to English. Notice that I left a really important message here to save the language settings configured on each buffer. You need to add this local options to session options in the options.lua file. I'll show you that in a minute. But the only thing that this key map does is set the spell line to English. The same thing if we want to set it to Spanish, we just set it to ES. And if we want to set the spelling language to two different languages, we just do that here, English and Spanish. I'm working with these two languages because that's the ones that I use. But if instead of Spanish, you know a different language, just replace it with Spanish or English, however the case may be. The other key maps that I have here, MSS is to show the spelling suggestions when you have a word that is not typed correctly. Let me show you real quick. I'm going to jump back here. I'm going to type a word in English that is going to be misspelled. For example, misspelled. Notice that I have a spelling mistake. I'm just going to press leader MSS and it automatically automatically corrected that. I go over this key map on the other video, my markdown workflow video. So go and check it out if you want to find out more. And there are some other key maps here as well. And I discuss these in that video. So now after you configure the key maps here, depending on your distribution, the local options are going to be stored or not. The distribution that I use is LazyVim. Let me bring it up real quick. I'm just going to search here and it's the first link and it's this distribution. So if you're using LazyVim as well and you follow the exact same instructions that I'm giving you, you will not have any issues at all. So let me bring up the options.lua file and I'm going to look for this local options. Let's see, here is the options.lua file, the one on the top for my distro Neobean. I'm going to search here for local options. Notice that I left a note here in case that you forget. I added this local options to save the language spell settings. Otherwise, the language of my markdown documents was not remembered if I set it to Spanish or to both English and Spanish. What do I mean by this? So if I set the language to Spanish in a document, but then I quit Neovim and I reopened the same buffer, it would just set it to the default language, which was English. That's why I added this local options down here. Notice here, there's another message. The plugin that saves the session information is persistence.envim. It's a plugin created by Folky. And the plugin already comes enabled in the lazyvim.org distribution. So if you're using lazyvim, you don't have to worry about enabling anything else. If you're using a different distribution and you don't have a session persistence plugin, you can install this to persist the session information. The session options come from the lazyvim distribution. So I added all of them here. If I go to the website, you're going to be able to see under general settings. Let me scroll down a little bit. Under options, I have default options here. Let me go there. And if I search here for session options, you're going to see the options listed here. Which are the exact same ones that I added here. The only difference is that I added this extra one, local options. Now notice the default spell language that I said here. When I open any document, by default, it's going to be set to English. So just set it to the language that you use the most. Notice that when I switch to a different file, the spell option disappeared from Lua line. But if I switch back to a markdown document, it automatically shows up. Let me show you what happens if I open a bash script. I'm going to look here for something, this CSHRC file. Notice that I get the permissions for that file. This is not executable, but let me open one that is. Let's look for an .sh file. This one, for example, let me bring this up. This file is executable, so I can see it here in the permissions. It shows green. So it's useful when you're working with a lot of different bash scripts. Also, I created a color scheme selector. If I press hyper C N, I'm going to see the different color schemes that I have available here. Let me switch to one of these, this dark machine, for example, which is one that I created. It's based off of cat machine. I'm going to select it. 
notice that sketchy bar changed at the top. The tmax bar changed its colors. If I quit from Neovim, you're going to see that my Starship prompt as well changed its colors. And if I reopen Neovim, you're going to see the new colors applied based on this new color scheme. If you want to know how I set all of this up, I have a video, which is the one shown here. The first one, color scheme selector to change the colors in Kitty, tmax Starship, Neovim, sketchy bar, and more. It's quite a bit advanced because I use a lot of different bash scripts in the video. I'm planning on reorganizing the scripts in a different structure, in a different way, and create an update video so you can follow along. If there's any other topics that you would like to know about, some of the tools that I use but you don't know how I set them up, let me know down in the comments and I can create a video for that as well. And also remember to use